Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the video. It is uh, the morning after our first night on our Isla Jura trip. So we camped on Jura last night. And uh, it's probably one of the better nights sleep I have had camping, actually. Genuinely, I slept pretty well. Um, so, yeah, slept well through the night. It was nice and quiet, nice and peaceful. No rain, no wind. Pretty, pretty ideal conditions, and we had a, we had a good spot. Um, although I woke up this morning to hundreds of midges all over the tent on the outside, on the outside. Um, so I wanted to get up and have some coffee. Um, obviously, I can't have my coffee while I'm wearing my midge net. So I uh, made my coffee and I've come down to the coast where there are slightly fewer midges. There's slightly fewer midges down at the water side. Um, still midges down here, but there's not as many. There's, I mean, there's hundreds of them up at the tents. So yep, I'm just gonna enjoy my coffee, enjoy the sights, sounds of peaceful Isla and Jura. Okay, we have uh, we have packed up our camp. Stephen's looking for his tick card because he has got another tick. Um, we've packed up our camp and we're about to head off for the day. Um, so we've got the bike all packed up. As a reminder, this little series of videos is being sponsored by the guys at Fussel Bikes. Um, I'll put a link to their website and everything in the comments. Um, they have very kindly lent me the Fussel Causeway GR1 for this trip. I will do a video once I get back talking a little bit more about the bike and my setup on it for this trip. We have a little change of plans today and um, the plan was that we were going to go round on round the coast of Jura and go to Craig House uh, where the Jura distillery is. We were going to have a nosy at the distillery and explore Craig House and get some lunch and stuff around there. However, we have realized a couple of flaws in that plan. Number one, the distillery is closed on Saturdays and Sundays, so we can't go and see it. And number two, the um, Jura Fell race is on this weekend. So there's an extra kind of 200, 250 people, plus staff, marshals, all that kind of stuff around there. So the one cafe and the one shop um, are going to be absolutely bunged. So we figured we'll skip that on this trip and we will maybe come back and do that again another time. So what we're going to do, we're going to head back, get the ferry back across Isla, and then head kind of west on Isla. And we're going to go hopefully to uh, Bunahaven Distillery, Bunahaven Distillery, don't know how to pronounce that, Bunahaven Distillery, and then on round through the forest, uh, which will bring us back out at Bally Grant, then down the main road, I mean, if you can call it a main road, uh, the whole way down towards Port Charlotte, where we'll hang a right and head up over a bit of a hill, drop down and hopefully find a nice secluded beach camp spot for tonight. Um, the wind is to pick up a bit, so hopefully we won't have the same problem with midges tonight as we did last night and this morning. But yeah, first night's camp on Jura was... Uh, it's pretty successful, so what do you think, Steve? Back to Isla? There's less midges and ticks on Isla. <laughs> less midges and ticks on Isla, so that's a thumbs up from Steve for Isla. Let's go.
back at Fiolin Ferry, which is the name of the, I mean, I can't even call it a town. It's not even a hamlet. It's a house, and it's within a block, and that's where you get the ferry. And we'll get the, the ferry, ferry's just behind us. We'll get the ferry back across to Port Askeg. And then we have about a four and a half mile steep climb. Um, there's a drop, we dropped on the other side, but it's probably a two mile climb and then a two mile drop um, to get us to Bunahaban Distillery, where hopefully we can do a tour, maybe a tasting, um, and yeah, we'll see. One of the good things about this trip is we've sussed out a few camping spots. We have ideas about what we would like to do, but we're very laid back about it and we have no real agenda. You know, we're just being very, very flexible and seeing what each day brings, which is really nice rather than having to be, you know, at certain places at certain times. Um, so yeah, just kind of taking it easy, which is great. Um, I hear the ferry loading at the other side so and it takes like two minutes to get across so I'm gonna go get the bike ready. to the shop. So um, we came down this hill yesterday and it was really, really good fun to cycle down, but it's gonna be a pretty brutal climb back up to the main road. And then we have to climb further up over the hill to get to the distillery. Stephen's really looking forward to it. Stephen loves hills. super steep bit of the road but I think there's still a fair bit of climbing for the next four miles and um, well, maybe next mile and a half and then downhill to Bunahaven Distillery. Look, the views are just stunning.
Well, we've made it down to Boonahaven Distillery. Um, the weather is starting to turn a little bit, a bit grim, but we've made it to the distillery. Uh, I haven't done my research, so I don't know if there's any tours or tastings or anything happening, but we'll go into the visitor centre and find out, I guess. As it turns out, there are no tours currently running today, um, but very kindly, one of the members of the staff has offered to give Stephen and I a tour anyway, so that's pretty cool. So we're going to go for a, a tour of Buna Haven, that's how you pronounce it, Buna Haven Distillery. Four, four before, or I don't know, most of, well, all of the old distilleries on Isla. The weather has turned somewhat uh, frightful. Drake. We used to be able to see Jura. Jura's there somewhere. Jura's gone. I think it might be st it's stopped. I think it's stopped running actually. It's that awful, kind of horrible, misly rain where everything gets absolutely soaked. So we're just hanging out in the bar after the distillery tour for a little bit. Um, and then we're going to have to suck it up, put the rain jackets on, put the cameras away. Um, I think we've got about maybe a half hour cycle to get to somewhere where we can stop for lunch and maybe set out the rain. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Disgusting. I mean, half an hour by my timings. Half an hour, but okay, so lunch is at least 45 minutes away. <laughs> a slight change of plan. We're not going to go off road through the forest and the gravel um, because it's a bit unknown and it is lunchtime and we need to find somewhere for lunch and the weather's the weather's grim so we just want to try and find somewhere stop have a big feed and then plan for the afternoon see if we can find somewhere to, to spend the night yeah dip rise dip beautiful scenes from yesterday and today have been replaced by the misery greyness of Scotland but uh, I mean the mizzle and the bleakness and the drinkness has a beauty all on its own the weather has actually eased a bit to be fair it's not too bad but once you're out in it you're out in it you know it's all right and um, so this is the main road, if you can call it the main road between Port Askig and Bridge End. So we'll head down here and there's a restaurant on the right hand side, the Valley Grand Inn, where I think we're going to stop and try and get some lunch. Close. Oh no. Close. What? Close. Really? Yeah. And it's closed during daytime hours at present. It's not normally closed during the day, but apparently it is at the minute. Okay. Okay, so the place, the Battle Grant Inn, that we had planned to stop and get lunch, apparently it's closed during the days at the minute. Um, it's not normally closed during the day, but it is now. So we've come on down a little bit further. Um, and stopped at a little coffee shop and get some food. Uh, but more importantly than the food, 
Just to charge everything, charge all the things, because all my batteries are running low, so I need to charge everything when I get the opportunity. Okay, so we got some food at the Craig Art Kitchen and Cafe. Really tasty panini. Uh, black pudding, brie and chilli jam. That's going on a pizza when I go home. Um, uh, we met, met a new cyclist friend. We met Joel. Hey. Joel is from Switzerland and is also cycling around Isla. Um, and that's Stephen. You know Stephen. That's Stephen. So plan now is to head this way. Uh, as far as Port Charlotte. And then we'll decide what the plan is for camping and that sort of thing for tonight so about an hour should take us to Port Charlotte where we will probably stop for food again let's go For reference, for any people watching who uh, work for Northern Irish government, either local council or whatever, this is how you do a cycle path. So we've made it round to Port Charlotte and we're just having a nice, very nice pint. I'm very impressed with the, the, the Isla Brewery, whatever beer from Isla, the, the, the beer. I've had a couple of their beers here, uh, really, really tasty. Um, so yeah, having a beer, they don't really have any food on it at the minute, that's fine. Um, but we've asked, we've asked advice for uh, our, cy our cycle route. So the plan was either to go up over the mountain and push our bikes down the other side to the beach and camp or we were gonna just go back by the road we didn't want to go back by the road apparently it's very doable to go over the mountain so we're gonna do that it does look like a westerly wind so it could be quite windy down the other side but um, no hoping that means no midges and hopefully we can find a bit of shelter in some sand dunes or something somewhere so but for now I'm gonna enjoy the pint and make a plan it is a tad unpleasant. It's raining again. We're getting wet again. And we're taking the back roads. I mean, part of it's not even a road. We're going across fields to get to a beach to camp.
Right, the plan is to try and get to a place called Makir Bay, which is a, apparently a beautiful beach. Uh, it has some sand dunes behind it where hopefully we can camp and get a bit of shelter. There is there is a way we could have gotten from Port Charlotte to Makir Bay sticking to the road. We could have gone back up the road we came four miles and then turned inland for another four miles. But um, we're going to try and go kind of the off-road way. So we'll head up this lane behind us and this lane will take us up to... Um, there's like radio masts uh, up there. So this is like a service road to access the radio masts. Once we get up there, there's a hiking trail that goes down and left around the side of the, the mountain, the hill. Um, so we will have to push our bikes down that rather than ride down it. But uh, in theory, that should bring us down at Makir Bay in an area of Isla called Kilcoman. Um, so that's, that's the plan. A bit more fun. Get a McSkitterson. Close the gate, please. We are responsible trespassers. Oh, actually, it's not trespassing in Scotland. It's right of way. Great. <laughs> This reminds me a lot of the Causeway Coast at home, but at like on a slightly more epic scale, it's it's incredible. Again, got here by bike from home. Mad.
pole's not. Sand is okay, loose sand is not. I'm not even trying. Start it. You line up on your hip. I just slide so I just slide slide. It's because our weight yeah, is pushing it that way. So many rabbits. Hundreds of them. After that rather sketchy uh, descent from the top of the mountain down through through the sand dunes with millions of rabbits, well maybe not millions but certainly hundreds of rabbits um, and a lot of sheep, uh, we are down in the sand dunes and we found a nice, Stephen's testing for a flat piece of ground there, um, we find a reasonably flat piece of ground which we can hopefully camp in. It's sheltered from the worst of the wind but not completely sheltered so there's a bit of a breeze which will hopefully keep midges at bay. We're hoping that there's not any kind of ticks in the grass. Um, but yeah, it seems like a pretty pretty good spot to set up camp for uh, for tonight. So uh, let's let's go. Let's get it set up. So Stephen is pitched, ready to go. I have pitched my tent, but I get into it and realise something was a bit off. Somehow it is simultaneously both sagging on the inside and touching the outer so i need to take it down and re-pitch it wonderful okay i fixed my tent i don't know what i'd done wrong just hadn't tensioned it correctly and blah 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 but anyway i fixed it now so all pitched bikes are there all locked up steven's over there let me give you a tour of my tiny tent you see ox fox one version two it's probably about six and a half feet long at most um so i've got the door open at the minute uh, in there i'll keep all my stuff that i'm likely to need access to this evening or might need access to hopefully I won't need the first aid kit but it's handy got my stove my kind of food sit mat water all that kind of stuff and then in the tent i have got so i've got my sleeping bag all set up uh, I've got my Alpkit Cloud Base Air in there. Basically, I've put my helmet and stuff up there. I've got a couple of bags down this side, GoPro, that sort of thing. Um, and then out here, I've got my uh, other Panair bags. Basically, stuff that I'm not going to need tonight uh, is there. And that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. It's super tiny. This is Makir Bay, or Makir Beach, um, on the, the west coast of Isla. That is the Atlantic Ocean, and there is nothing, there is nothing out there until you get to Newfoundland in Canada, which is, <laughs> which is crazy, it is crazy. This beach is vast, it's huge. So earlier we came down from up there, down the side of that, and we are camping just over in the dunes over there. This is stunning, this is absolutely stunning.
That's Stephen just taking his drone for a walk on the beach. So today wasn't quite as good as yesterday weather-wise, but it was still all right. It is definitely noticeably cooler this evening. Um, we're very exposed down here. We're right on the western coast of Isla. And like I said earlier, there's nothing between us and Canada. So you're getting the full kind of wind off the sea. So it's definitely, definitely cooler. Um, so we're gonna just have uh, have a drink of hot chocolate, warm up, and then I think climb into bed reasonably soon. Plan for tomorrow. We are just down the road from Kilcoman Distillery, so we'll maybe take a spin to Kilcoman Distillery, uh, and then it'll be back through Bowmore, over the hill to Port Ellen. Uh, one of them to Lefroig as well, just to pick up some of their whiskey truffles or whiskey fudge I can't remember I got some last time and it was amazing um, and then I'll be back to Port Ellen for the boat back home but anyway um, thank you for watching I really appreciate it and um, if you want to see more cinematic uh, take on our trip to Isla and Jura go follow Stephen's YouTube channel his will be way better than mine his will be much more dramatic and cinematic and, and all that kind of stuff um, but but thank you for watching, I, I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please make sure to like uh, the video, leave me a comment, and if you're not subscribed, uh, please do subscribe. Um, it really helps my channel grow, I would appreciate that. And I will see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow for me, but probably like a week for you guys. Um, and it will be my last day on Ida on this trip. Good night.